Welcome back to The Morning Mindset. It is our opportunity today to get our minds and our hearts aligned with the truth of God's Word. Today we're going to be looking at a great eternal opportunity that every one of us has. But before we dive into it, I just want to invite you to reach out to me. I've been having such a good time interacting with Morning Mindset listeners recently, praying for the prayer requests people are sending to me. I'm just really enjoying it. I would love to hear from you and know something of your story and how you came to learn about the Morning Mindset. Please reach out to me. My email is carrie, C-A-R-E-Y, at carriegreen.com. All right, let's look at John chapter 4, verses 35 through 38. Now we're right at the tail end of a situation where Jesus has spoken with a woman about receiving from him what he called living water. He's describing his his forgiveness and his salvation as the Messiah in very vivid terms to help her understand this is a form of spiritual satisfaction that every human being is offered by the living God. She has gone into the city to tell all the people about it, and they are coming out to meet Jesus. And his disciples, who were not there when he first met her, are a little bit confused. They were they were curious why he's talking to her. And Jesus had said to them that he had food to eat that they knew nothing about. And that food was doing the will of his father. Well, here in verse 35, he picks up and he says, do you not say there are yet four months, then comes the harvest? Look, I tell you, lift up your eyes and see that the fields are white for harvest. Already the one who reaps is receiving wages and gathering fruit for eternal life, so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Now what is Jesus talking about here? Suddenly he's talking about crops and harvesting and planting seeds and reaping a harvest, and he's saying that the disciples are intended to be a part of that. What in the world is he talking about? Well, Jesus is trying to point out to them because they were so concerned about him eating a meal rather than the spiritual food that he had to partake of that was doing the will of his father. And so he's pointing out the people all around you who are coming out of this city are like a harvest. The the seed of the word of the scripture and the, the prophecies of the Old Testament and the law of Moses All of that has been planted in their lives and in their lineage. And now it's starting to rise up and bear fruit in their lives. And you are here as God's workers to help reap that harvest. I'm sending you into a field that's already ripe. Your job is to point others to me, to help others see that I am the living water. I am the one who can satisfy them eternally. And friends, that same opportunity that the disciples had, we have today. We have the opportunity to point others to Jesus. We do it through the way we live. We do it through the love that we show to people, even when they are not responding to us very lovingly themselves. We do it by demonstrating the sacrificial love of Jesus to those who are around us. doesn't matter what kind of lifestyle they're involved in. doesn't matter what kind of animosity they may have toward Jesus and spiritual things, our role as believers is to love those who Jesus came to seek and to save. Our role is to help him bring in the harvest of all the people who he desires to become believers in him. Friends, I want to encourage you, don't miss this eternal opportunity. You and I have the invitation from Jesus himself to enter into his kingdom work by pointing others to him. He is King Jesus. He is the ruler of the universe. There's no president, no prime minister, no king or queen who holds a candle to him. We should be more involved in enthusiastically endorsing him than we are any political candidate, any political party. We should be involved in pointing people to the king of kings because he is the only one who can satisfy their souls. Social projects are great, human need projects are great, but human soul projects are even greater. Friends, this opportunity is one we're invited into. It's a privilege, and the good news is he empowers us to do our part through his Holy Spirit. 
So as we move into our time of prayer today, I want you to open your eyes and look around you. Where's the ripe harvest around you that God has brought up? What can you do to engage in the harvesting of those people by pointing them to Jesus? Lord, we ask you to give us the eyes to see what you see. Who are the people around us who are just right on the edge of accepting Christ, of, of seeking Him, of finding Him? And all they need is someone who will testify for you, someone who will tell how great you are. And Lord, make us those kingdom workers right alongside you. We ask it in Jesus' precious name.